Welcome everyone. This is the third part of my reflow controller board video series. And uh, I think now I can clear up a lot of things and show you a lot of uh, improvements. So I will do that in this part. And what you can see here is a complete system, which I tested and it seems to work. So I will show you each part of it. And I will at the end of the video show you the code line by line. So you will know what uh, controls the heating plate, uh, what controls the thermometer, the display and so on and so on. So let's start with the PCB because that's uh, the most important part, I think. Uh, this is the second build. I have the first build here in my hand. And uh, this is what I built in the second video. And here in this uh, PCB, I still had the sockets for the display and uh, also a socket for the uh, rotary encoder. But then for this one, I got rid of it and I directly soldered everything to the board, except uh, the uh, Arduino microcontroller, because I always want to have the possibility to update the software. And for me, it's uh, easier to just unplug it from the socket, like here, this empty space here, and bring it to my computer and then uh, do the rest of the things. And then I also did a little change with the connections for the fan. Here I have this uh, typical JST connector, but here it's just uh, jumper pins. And then uh, basically that's all. I also added some uh, acrylic plate to the top here. As you can see, it's uh, shining and uh, mirroring uh, things or reflecting things. This is just to avoid touching anything at the uh, live part. And I added one more at the bottom, you can see it there, uh, just to avoid anything touching the back part, especially this part of the PCB and shorting out the things. And uh, this PCB is provided by the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. Uh, they provided me this very nice PCB, not only one, but uh, five pieces. And I can only recommend their services because as you can see, they can make a very nice PCB. This time I chose the yellow one because I haven't tested this color yet. I have these other colors tested as you can see, but this also had to be in my collection. So I can only say that uh, they uh, create very nice PCBs. I gave them some challenges by uh, cutting these uh, funny shapes to separate the high voltage uh, components from the low voltage components or just uh, to separate uh, the traces at critical places and I think they did a very nice job so despite the fact that I came up with some uh, very arbitrary uh, shapes they machined them very nicely or milled them very nicely I also added this uh, mounting pad and this also turned out to be great so check the link in the description you can go to pcbray.com and you can check their services and you can also directly buy this uh, PCB and you can make your own uh, reflow uh, controller board based on my uh, project. So let's see once again, just a small repetition, what is on this board. So we have an LCD, which will give us a full uh, visual feedback from the process, what is happening on the heating uh, plate. We have an Arduino Nano that controls everything basically, rotary encoder, which helps us to navigate in the menu and uh, select or unselect options. A MAX 6675 uh, chip based thermocouple uh, thermometer that wire runs here. And this will be attached uh, or it will touch the top of the PCB. And then on the high voltage side, on the right side, we have this uh, power brick. It's uh, five volts and 600 milliamps. This will provide the five volt for these electronics down here and we'll uh, power these two fans as well. And then uh, there is an opto coupler which will switch the triac on and off and then just the auxiliary circuit here for the triac and driving the triac. And then uh, there is an input for the uh, 230 AC and then this output which I haven't connected yet uh, will be attached to the heater. And one uh, big improvement will be the heater. Previously I showed you some very uh, dodgy one. 
Um, I mean, it's not dodgy regarding its safety, but it's just not the best in performance. But then I kept searching on the internet and I found this guy here. And this is a ceramic heater, as you can hear. And this is uh, 12 by 12 centimeters. And as you can guess from these uh, grooves here, or this pattern, uh, there is some, probably some heating wires running under the surface of this ceramic plate and they make it hot. And this is actually part of uh, those BGA uh, stations, but you can buy them and they are relatively cheap. And uh, some of them, actually this one as well, comes with a built-in thermometer. And that was here where I point. So there is a hole which almost goes underneath this part entirely. So I believe that it, if I push the thermometer in properly, then it will touch uh, the other side here from the inside. So this had a NTC, probably NTC or PTC uh, thermometer. I don't know. I asked the seller, but uh, they did not tell me. They did not respond my message. So I removed that thermometer. And actually I did an experiment by uh, using my thermocouple and pushing it in. But that gave me a very bad feedback because I also used another thermocouple using this thermometer and measured the the temperature on the top and that was totally different so then i decided to just attach the thermometer uh, the end of the thermocouple on the top of the uh, pcb because at the end of the day that has to be at the certain temperature for soldering reflowing and so on so yeah this hole will not work but uh, as you can see it on the text hopefully this is a 600 watt unit so it's powerful as hell and it uh, gets hot very nicely. But there is one uh, drawback of this. It retains heat in a very good way as well. So after I turn off uh, the heating, it will be still hot for yeah, several minutes. And that's not necessarily good. But uh, first of all, I have this guy. So this is a bit larger, it's the same as this guy here, but this is 18 by, by 18 centimeters. So this will allow me to yeah, solder larger panels, but I'm not there yet to solder larger panels, but uh, I can use this as well uh, to uh, control it with this uh, circuit. And then we have this uh, mica heater. So this is a stainless steel uh, enclosure it's uh, relatively thin and what we have inside this is there is an insulator sheet made of mica and then wire is wrapped around it and then that thing is sandwiched inside two uh, mica sheets again and the whole thing is wrapped with this uh, stainless steel pouch or enclosure and then uh, this is also heating very rapidly and it can reach three to four hundred degrees celsius so it was uh, much more hot than we required and uh, also a good thing is that this is made of metal so it's a better conductor than the ceramic uh, tile here uh, which allows us to heat it up easier uh, have a much quicker let's say thermal response and so on and so on so this might be better but i noticed that when i heat this up i just directly connect it to the ac outlet uh, when i heat this up it uh, bulges and uh, it gets swollen so then uh, the contact area uh, between let's say the PCB and uh, the surface of this uh, heater will not be perfect and that's a big problem so I have to find a way to attach this to a flat uh, surface an aluminium sheet for example and then uh, keep it uh, there and get the heat transferred to the surface of the PCB through a flat uh, sheet of aluminium, for example. But this can be also used uh, with this circuit as well. So then you can see this uh, construction here. This is just a 3D printed frame and I added these uh, ceramic pillars. So then uh, this is sized for this uh, ceramic uh, heater. So that sits on top of this. These screws are under the surface, so they are not in direct contact with the, uh, with the 
uh, heater. And then there is also a small holder for the fans. They are a bit uh, tilted, so they blow at the surface or on the surface of the uh, PCB when they start uh, blowing the cold air or room temperature air. So that's all about this uh, thing. And uh, what I want to show you here is uh, two things. First, I just uh, run a quick experiment with this, uh, just to see how the heating curve looks like when we measure the temperature and uh, then whether we can solder something or not. So I will just again use this very simple AS5600 uh, circuit with only uh, five components, the chip and two capacitors, two resistors. And after that, I will guide you through the code and uh, I will show you what is inside this uh, Arduino microcontroller, which allows us to yeah, basically solder SMD components. So I prepare a little bit, connect a few things here and there, and uh, put the components on this board. And then uh, we will see how the process is going on. So I have uh, prepared everything and uh, I messed up the solder again, uh, as you can see it, but that's quite usual and uh, then we just have to do the measurements. So what I did, I put the solder paste on the uh, PCB, put the components on it, and then uh, as you can see there are two thermocouples here. Uh, the white one will be used for the uh, soldering station, so that is uh, the feedback for the controller. And uh, then there is another with the green wire, and that goes to this uh, black box here. And uh, that is just for me to check if the device that I built is measuring the correct temperature. And now you can see that uh, there is this uh, black tube here, which is uh, blocking part of the picture. And that is just another camera, which will hopefully give us some close up picture uh, of the soldering process. But I have to notice here that since I could not really arrange these wires in a nice way, at least for this experiment, uh, the view will not be 100% perfect, but uh, you will see at least the most important things. So now everything is uh, done, so I just have to turn on the power supply for the uh, PCB, and then uh, I will just uh, start the program and we will see what will happen. So just to tell you in advance that when I turn on this uh, thing, there will be a welcome message on the display which will be shown for five seconds. And during that five seconds, the fans will be turned on because uh, I wanted to make sure that the fans will run. So that will be kind of a startup check that if the fans run while the welcome message is shown, then the things are more or less uh, in a good uh, shape. So I can see that everything is ready for the experiment. So let me turn on the power supply. And now the fence started and we see the vacuum message here and the fence turned off and I can see the curve on the display. And I pre-programmed uh, the values already for this kind of soldering uh, material. So basically what is on the display of the controller board is corresponding for the reflow curve of this specific uh, solder paste. So I just have to find the start button and then I have to start the soldering procedure. So I start recording with the uh, secondary camera and I ad adjust the camera a little bit, then I will uh, start the soldering procedure. So the soldering is done and as you could see it went uh, quite okay I would say. Of course due to the excess amount of solder paste that I applied the solder is not perfectly nice but it does the job. And unfortunately I was too slow so I could not capture the recorded 
uh, reheating and reflowing curve but uh, I will just take a screenshot from the video, enlarge it and put it on the display on the video so you will see it but I would say that the temperature was uh, followed relatively nicely so that's uh, quite nice and uh, I would say that the soldering was uh, done in a, in a good way and one thing that you can still see on these two displays hopefully that uh, this thing is still hot 124 degrees or 120 based on this uh, thermometer uh, so it's hot for touching and hot for uh, working with it so that's uh, the let's say drawback of this kind of heater that it will take some time uh, to cool it down I believe even with some active cooling because it's just yeah a lot of mess uh, because it's a big uh, piece of uh, ceramic tile and uh, it's a ceramic material so it's not a good uh, thermal a conductor so once it is heated up it will take some time to uh, yeah, pull out the heat but uh, I would say that this uh, this was a successful experiment so that's uh, really nice and now all what is left is that I will go to the computer and I will show you the programming line by line and here I would like to emphasize that if you want to get the code just to copy paste it then please go to my patreon link is in the description and become my patreon supporter then you will get the code and you can modify it and uh, you can do anything with it without uh, needing to type it in but if you don't want to support me then you just uh, follow the video and you can copy the uh, things by writing it manually so let's go to the computer and uh, check how the code looks like and what it does so this is the code and let's go through it quickly it is more than thousand lines so it might take a while but uh, bear with me and you will be able to understand how this code works so in the beginning I do uh, the usual thing I just uh, attach or include the libraries which are needed I use the SPI library because of the display and because of the thermometer module and then because of the display I use the graphics uh, libraries from Adafruit and the display also requires us to define the chip select the res reset and the dc pin or a0 pin uh, in in this way so you just uh, write these things down and you will be able to control the display and if you need additional colors you can define them in the following way and you will be able to uh, display these colors on the rcd and then uh, we create a tft object here so this is how it works and uh, in the following line here I just uh, define the things which are needed for the rotor encoder so we have the CRK uh, pin which will be also an interrupt pin and then we have the DT pin which is the other uh, let's say pulse emitting pin of the uh, rotor encoder and then of course we have the switch because that will be our button uh, pin so these of course cannot be changed if you use my uh, PCB because it's uh, yeah etched into the PCB so you cannot really define them anywhere else or in a different way and then uh, this uh, selected item is a counter which will help the code identify which uh, item is selected and by item I mean one of the temperature values or one of the time values on the reflow curve and then uh, we have a few variables which are needed to uh, keep track of the change of the status of the rotor encoder so therefore we check uh, the statuses of the CRK and the DT pins so that's why we have these uh, variables here and of course uh, I need a variable to store the value of the rotor encoder button that is either 1 or 0 whether it is pressed or not and uh, then this rotary button time uh, I made a let's say cheap debouncing uh, code which just doesn't allow the code to be triggered uh, for a while until we press uh, after we press the, the rotary encoder button once so that means that if we press the button the code immediately uh, starts a timer and uh, that timer or the code uh, related to that timer will not allow the uh, further button presses to be registered 
And why this is good is because when we press the button, usually it uh, bounces or rings. So it uh, emits or it gives a lot of, lot of pulses. And uh, this can confuse the microcontroller. And then you have to debounce it. You can do it with hardware or with this kind of code, for example. And that will be uh, good for us. It will make our life uh, easier. Then uh, we have this uh, MAX 6675 module. And here I have to say that I have a video on this module itself, just a video dedicated to this uh, thermometer module. So check the video because uh, if you are interested in the thermometer in more details, then you will find a lot of information in that video. And I basically just copy pasted my own code from that uh, part, from that video. So that's what you see here. So we have an integer, which is the raw uh, value coming from the thermocouple. It's a 12 bit thermocouple. So a simple integer is enough to uh, store the uh, value here. And then uh, we store the thermometer readings which are store uh, which are converted into celsius degrees in this variable we also need to define a chip select pin for the uh, module and then i have a timer for uh, the temperature uh, or the thermometer which is just how often we will read the thermometer then uh, we have some things which take care of the heating part so there should be one pin which turns the triac on and off. So I chose pin number nine on the Arduino Nano. And there is another pin which turns the fans or the transistor which turns the fans on and off. That is pin number three. And then uh, we have to take care of these uh, cooling fan enabled and heating enabled uh, variables. That is just to let the code know that uh, we are running the fans or we are running the heating or not. Then uh, there is a timer for the triac and there is also a switching interval for the triac. This timer is used to avoid blocking the code and the interval is just the interval how often we want to see if we should switch the period or not. Now uh, it's one second, so every one second the code checks if we are at or about the program temperature or not and then it turns on the triac if it's needed or if we are way beyond it or something like that, then it turns off the uh, track. Uh, but you will see it in the further parts of the code. Uh, fan timer. This is also for not blocking the code while keeping track of the time for how long the fans has been uh, turned on. And then uh, elapsed heating time. That is what it says. So the time spent in the heating phase. So that's basically when we draw the curve for the uh, reflowing, then uh, the elapsed time during that uh, drawing. And of course the heating process will be um, stored in this uh, variable. Then further down, we have a bunch of variables. And I told you in the video that I have stored or already pre-programmed a certain uh, heating curve for my specific uh, solder paste. And this is what you see here. Uh, what you see, uh, we have a volatile integer because we change it with the uh, rotary encoder, which is in a interrupt function. So if you use something in an interrupt, you have to define it as a volatile function. So the compiler will know where to store these variables. Uh, so we have a preheat uh, phase. So that has a temperature and a time. And then we have a soaking phase, also temperature, time. And here I have to uh, emphasize, I also left a note here, that uh, the time is always the total elapsed time. So here it's not the time which we spend in the soaking phase, but the time which is elapsed at the end of the soaking phase. So here it's, it's basically the same because this is the first phase. So preheat time 90 seconds. The unit is seconds here. And then here it's uh, 180, but we already spent 90 seconds there. So we can guess that the uh, soaking time is also 90 seconds, but just for you uh, and also for myself to not forget this, let's say half a year later, I wrote down a notice how the time develops. And then we have the reflow part and then we have the cooling part, uh, which is 
not the cooling, but just the phase before the cooling. So basically, uh, where we have the peak of the uh, reflow curve. And after this time is elapsed, so after 250 seconds in this specific program, we turn on the fence and turn off the track, therefore the heating. Uh, target temperature, you will see it later why we keep track of this. And then uh, here I made uh, formulas, uh, two, I made two formulas. One is to create some kind of multiplication factor for the temperatures. Uh, when we want to convert a value into a pixel value and the same for the time. So what is uh, behind this equation here is that I know that the maximum temperature that I will reach or what I want to display on my uh, chart is 250 degrees and then I know what is the range in terms of pixels on the display but I have to subtract uh, some things because I want to shift this, uh, this chart or more specifically the y-axis of it. So it will not uh, go from one edge of the display to the other edge of the display, but uh, I will start three pixels from the bottom and stop 20 pixels before the top of the display. And that's what is inside this formula and when I solve the equation I will get that one pixel will be equivalent to 2.38 uh, degrees Celsius and then with the time it's the same so this is the horizontal axis I know that uh, I will have 300 seconds or five minutes I want to show that much uh, time or that long time period and I know that on the horizontal area this is the physical display size I have 160 pixels, but I want to start the uh, X axis from the third pixel. So that's why I have this three there. And I want to stop three pixels before the end of the display. So then uh, this formula is, it is what it is. And then I get uh, the following value at the end that uh, one pixel will be roughly equivalent to two seconds. So when uh, I see that, uh, there are two pixels next to each other, then that is uh, four seconds roughly, a little bit less. But uh, this is just for the formulas which will figure out how to make the real-time plotting. And then uh, these are just the values for the physical values, time and temperature, but in terms of pixels. So these uh, in integer variables will store the, the values where the software should put the pixel for the chart. And then we have still a lot of variables here. So this is just for the rotor encoder. So when we navigate in the menu, which is now navigating uh, across the variables, time and temperature, uh, then the microcontroller will know the position. So it will know that if I clicked uh, on a certain value, then I will, let's say, have the item counter uh, to be equal six. It will know that item counter equals six is the uh, temperature variable for the uh, reflow phase or something like that. And then previous item counter, this is also important because when we move around these variables, time and temperature, we always highlight them. So the user sees that uh, now we are about to modify this or that value. But when we move the highlighting uh, either forward or backwards, uh, the previous highlighting has to be removed. So we have to keep track of that because uh, if I don't uh, keep track of the uh, highlighting, and I don't remove them, then at the end of the, let's say, full uh, uh, navigation around the, the menu, uh, I will have all the items highlighted and then I will not know which item is highlighted for real. So that's how it works. Then uh, we have to know if we change the menu. So that will trigger the code to actually remove the previous highlighting and highlight the next item that we are at. 
And then if we select something, then also the code will know that, oh, hey, this item is selected. So when we turn the rotor encoder, now we are not navigating in the menu anymore, but we are increasing or decreasing the value of the selected item. And then, uh, yeah, these guys are the items that we can select. So whenever they are selected, uh, one of these values, one at a time only, because you cannot put them uh, true. I mean, I cannot select all of them and make them true. You can only make true only one at a time. And you have to make it false before making true, before making another uh, value true. So this is basically what they say. Whether we selected the preheat time, the soaking temperature, the cooling temperature, and so on and so on. This is also really uh, easy, whether we should redraw the curve or not. And then program counter, we have the program, which is these. I already wrote a cheat sheet here. So the zero is the preheating, and then we have the soaking, reflow, reflow hold, and the cooling phase. And then uh, this will help us to know when to turn on and off the triac and so on. And then these are just some values for the characteristics of the display and how I decided how to define, for example, the range for the temperature and the time uh, range and, and so on and so on. And how the display is aligned and how I should uh, then write the code because now uh, I have a display in a certain orientation on the PCB and because of this I have to rotate the display in the code. So now we have the setup. So we start the serial because I can also send all the data to the serial port. So then that's nice because I can check if everything works well. And currently I'm just printing this text so I know which code is on the nano. And uh, I will see that, okay, this was the 1.2 version or whatever. So then we also need the SPI because, of course, the thermometer and the display communicates with the Arduino via SPI. We start with the pins. So this is just uh, the regular exercise for defining the input pins for the uh, rotary encoder. And then uh, the CLK pin will become a interrupt pin. And right after this, we just read the current status, which is the previous status for the CRK and the DT pins. So when we move the uh, rotary encoder for the first time, the status after, let's say, one click of the rotary encoder will be compared to these states. And then uh, the code will be able to figure out whether we turned clockwise or counterclockwise. Then we have the chip select pin for the uh, max 6675 nothing else to explain here then uh, we have the triac output pin this just turns the optocoupler on and off and the same with the transistor which switches the two 5 volt fans on and off and here i turn on the fan this is what i explained you a few minutes ago in the video that here i turn on the fan this is a test just to see if they spin up and then I uh, start the display and then this goes on and on. So we print the text. You can replace this or modify this, do whatever you want. And then after printing the display, we wait for five seconds. For these five seconds, the fans are still on. And then uh, I erase the content of the display, draw the reflow curve. That's the default curve that you see when you start the device. And then I turn off the fan or fans because there are two and and that's all end of the setup phase so then we are in the loop uh, I made it very simple so I just put the functions here none of them are blocking there are no delays nothing just timers so uh, everything is uh, running on and on whether we trigger something or not so then we start with the first uh, function which is actually the interrupt function triggered by the rotor encoder and what we see here first is that when we move the rotary encoder, we enter this function. And when we enter this function, the first thing we do is we read the status of the CRK pin. And based on the selected menu item, which uh, temperature, which time we modify, uh, we, we enter one of these functions. There is a lot I will show you. 
And for example, if we have the preheat, uh, preheat temperature uh, selected, as you can see, and read it from this if condition, then uh, we check what happened with the CRK pin. And uh, based on the result of this uh, checking of this uh, condition, either we decrease the temperature if the temperature is about 20 degrees, or we increase the temperature if the temperature is below 150 degrees. And of course you can change these, but for example, going below 20 doesn't make any sense because yeah, everywhere you have at least 20 degrees as room temperature. So that's, that's fine. And then it doesn't really make sense to go beyond 150 degrees. Uh, so I kind of hard coded this value here. Uh, you cannot go beyond this inside the uh, microcontroller when you use the microcontroller because yeah, it doesn't make sense. And after this change is done, we let the code know that the menu is changed. So it has to refresh the value on the display and uh, we store the most recent uh, CRK state. And now what happens is exactly the same, but now it's for the time. And I will just show you each line. So if you want to type these things in, then uh, you can uh, copy them from the display, but it does exactly the same. So if we selected the preheat time, in this case, we check what happened with the uh, CRK pin. And based on the status of the CRK pin, we either decrease the value of the time or we increase the value of the time. And again, we let the code know that uh, we have to update the display and we store the status of the CRK pin. And here, this is the same for the soaking temperature. Here, this is the same for the soaking time. This is the same for the reflow temperature reflow time, cooling temperature, cooling time. And then uh, there is an other else if which is empty. So this is uh, the first uh, different thing. When we are on the start stop button, we don't do anything because there is nothing to do with the rotor encoder. So this is just an empty function here. And if none of the items are selected, so we haven't selected any of the time and temperature values and we haven't pressed the start and stop button. We are in the main menu basically. And this part makes sure that we are navigating uh, across the different items, the different temperatures and times. So what happens now here is that we again just check what happens to the uh, CRK. We also store the previous item. And uh, then inside that part, what we have is that we check uh, how the DT and the CRK is related to each other. And after that, uh, I have this if else condition because I want to go around uh, the menu. So even if I just keep uh, turning the rotor encoder in one certain direction, after the last item, which is on the display, if I do one more click on the rotary encoder, we, uh, we should return to the first item. And then if I do the same in the opposite way, uh, that is coded down here, uh, if, if I go downwards, so if I go to the first item or item number zero in this uh, program, uh, after zero, the next item is not the minus one, but the item eight in, in this uh, specific example. So, so that's uh, how we do it uh, in this. And after this is done, we just again let the code know that the menu is changed and let the software know that uh, this is now the new CRK state. So then the next function is the re uh, reflow curve drawing. So if uh, we said the code that it should redraw the curve, then we erase the wall content, fill up the display with black, and uh, we also rotate the display in a landscape alignment, which is set rotation one. And then uh, we uh, draw the axis. So we have the X axis and we have the Y axis here. And after that, 
uh, I calculate the pixel values based on the real temperature values that I uh, set. So preheat temperature, preheat time, soaking temperature, soaking time, and so on and so on. And then uh, I call this draw curve function. So that will make uh, these pixel values uh, into a, yeah, something graphical. And then after that, I uh, draw the values. So you could see that at each uh, section of the, of the preheat curve, you could see the time and temperature. So that's what happens here. So here, this is for the preheating uh, phase, so time and temperature, uh, soaking phase, time and temperature, and then reflow phase, time and temperature, uh, then the holding time and temperature and then uh, finally I put down the start button on the bottom right corner of the display and then we tell the code that not to return uh, to this part again so the redraw curve is false until uh, yeah, a further uh, update and uh, just to show you one example here you can see that uh, the preheat time uh, pixel has a plus three factor here and uh, here I have another plus five and this is just to not draw the numbers over the curve but I just shifted them a little bit away so they are still uh, visibly close to the curve uh, or the point of the curve which they should represent but uh, they are not over the curve so this is just to shift the values not the values but shift the box which uh, holds the values a little bit so the same happens with the with the time as well so i just take the the, the preheat time uh, pixel value and the preheat uh, temperature pixel value and then uh, i know what is the size of the text uh, what is the height and what is the width so based on that i came up with these uh, values and each part of the curve is a bit different because sometimes I want to put them over the curve, sometimes put them under the curve, a little bit more left uh, shifting is applied, a little bit more right shifting is applied and so on. So that's what you see here as different uh, plus and minus numbers. So then we have this measure temperature. As I probably uh, suggested, I have a separate video for this. I put this uh, link in the uh, code here so you can directly go to my video where I explain everything so I'm not going to explain everything here for the uh, temp uh, thermometer specific things but I just tell you that every 250 milliseconds we enter this function uh, whatever happens so even when the heating is not running we measure the temperature because it's not a big deal to, to measure it and display it on the on the top left corner of the display but uh, what happens here is I just follow what we should do uh, with this uh, thermometer to, to communicate with it. So I just follow the handbook or data sheet and then uh, I pull down the uh, chip select pane, wait a little bit, transfer some dummy data to the uh, thermometer module to force uh, some data out of it. And then uh, I get that data, of course, it will be in the TC row variable. After bringing back the chip select pin to high and finishing the transaction, I just shift this TC row data to get out, of, get out the first uh, three bits. Uh, here you can see how it's uh, visualized. And after I got rid of these uh, three uh, bits, I just multiply the leftover values with 0 0.25 which is the resolution of this uh, thing and I get the values in degrees Celsius and you can see these commented parts uh, this is just to check if I read the correct data if you are very curious you can remove these two uh, things and uh, see the, the values on the uh, serial port and after I read the value so I have the TC Celsius I just set up the display accordingly and uh, I print the value and here you can see this extra uh, argument in this uh, function uh, that all only means that I don't uh, print any digits 
zero digits is printed, so you will see, let's say, 37, 38 uh, degrees Celsius, but I'm not uh, interested in the decimals. And then we don't do anything if, uh, if this timer is not uh, yet uh, valid. Then we have another function which checks the button. We are polling the button uh, because it's not really time critical, so it's enough to poll it. So we just check uh, the rotary button value whenever we are at this function in the main loop and read it. And based on how I wired everything, when the rotary button becomes zero and we have, a, uh, let's say, a pause coming from the rotary button after one second, this is the debouncing which I was talking about, then uh, we check where we are located in the menu. So this is the item counter. So we will see if we, for example, we selected or deselected the preheat temperature, the soaking temperature and so on and so on. So what happens here is that uh, it will be very repetitive. So I just explain one again and I show you the, the left over parts, but they do the same. So if the case is zero, so this item counter value is zero, what we do here is that we always flip the status of this Boolean variable. So if the preheat temp selected uh, variable was true, then at this very line, it becomes false. If it was false, it becomes true. And then we check, uh, okay, what it had uh, 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 became uh, right now. So if it became true, then uh, we have to draw a green background behind the text uh, of the, this specific variable, in this case, the preheat temperature. And that will let the user know that uh, okay, this value is highlighted, which means that when we will rotate the rotary encoder, this value will be modified. So what happens here is that uh, I know where I should modify the, uh, let's say, the rectangle, which we want to fill in with green. So that's what, that's what happens in this line. So I go to this specific coordinate, x, y, width and height. And uh, then I fill this rectangle up with green. And then I go to this coordinate, x, y. And then uh, I set the text color to red. And I print the preheat temperature there with red color. But if this variable became false, we enter this part. That means that we exited that uh, selected item or unselected the item. So we finished modifying the value of it. And that also means that uh, now we can redraw the curve because the curve now has a new value. So then I uh, put this redraw curve variable or change it to true. And actually this could happen inside the rotary encoder function where we modify the value of the curve with the rotor encoder and after each uh, click of the rotor encoder we could redraw the curve uh, basically real time but uh, it's just too much hassle to uh, write the code in that way so I was a tiny bit lazy to do it and I just don't see the point it's enough to just uh, change it whenever we finished modifying the, the value so curve is redrawn and then we just uh, go and uh, change the highlighting to yellow. And when the highlighting is yellow, that means that we are navigating in the menu. And then the same for everything, basically. So the case number one is the preheat time. And then uh, again, if it's highlighted for modifying the value, background becomes green. If we remove the highlighting because we finished modifying and we exited the, the menu, then the background becomes yellow. And then soaking temperature. And then this is the soaking time. This is the reflow temperature. This is the reflow time. And then uh, cooling temperature. Cooling time. And then uh, when we have the case number eight, that is the start and stop button. So 
then what happens here is that if we enable the start button, so we start uh, the, the heating, what happens here is that I remove all the time and temperature values from the display uh, just to clean up everything because we don't need those values anymore. Uh, I redraw the curve uh, just to have a clean start of the, of the reheat curve. And then uh, I change the background of the uh, start button uh, to, to green. So then I also replace the text to stop. So then it, I will know, or the user will know that when that button is pressed again, it will stop uh, whatever is happening right now, which is the heating. And then I enable the heating because we just started the, the, the heating and uh, I set this value to zero. So the timer for the heating starts now. Otherwise, if I stopped the heating, then I go to the start stop button I set its background to yellow, that indicates that it is selected uh, or selected for just uh, highlighting, but not for modifying. And uh, I replace the text to start. And then I also redraw the curve, so everything goes back, even the text. I disable the heating and I disable the cooling fans as well. And after all these things happened, the menu change becomes false and uh, the rotary button time uh, is reset to the most recent value read from the millis uh, counter. Then we arrive to this update highlighting function and this is a bit similar as for the button but this is now uh, triggered by rotating the rotor encoder. So when we rotated the rotor encoder then this variable usually becomes true. And based on our location in the menu, so which item we are at, uh, we highlight different uh, parts of the, of the display. And these different parts of the display are the boxes behind the values which show the time and the temperature for each face on the, on the display. So I will just show the first line and then I uh, basically repeated the same with the other variables. So there is nothing to explain there. So what happens here is that I go to these coordinates X and Y and I define this width and this height and I paint it with yellow. And then I go to these coordinates here. So this sets the cursor for the text. I change the text to red and print the preheat temperature over the yellow box with the red text. And when I have the yellow box uh, around one of these variables, that means that we are at that certain position in the menu. And exactly the same happens uh, with the next value, which is also which also belongs to the preheating, but now this is the time. And what you see as a difference, this line is exactly the same. So these lines are uh, basically the same, except that the Y uh, coordinate is now shifted by 10. And uh, that means in this case uh, that the preheat time value will be 10 pixels under the preheat temperature. And then uh, the cursor also has to be uh, shifted down by 10 pixels. So that is why you see 15 here and five uh, here because the preheat temperature is printed uh, 10 pixels above the preheat uh, time uh, variable. So then same uh, thing after we put the cursor we change the text color to red and the preheat time is printed over this yellow box and the same happens here for the soaking time uh, or sorry for the soaking temperature soaking time, reflow temperature, reflow time, uh, cooling temperature, cooling time, and then the same happens also with the start button. And then uh, this part here uh, takes care of the previous items. When we moved from, let's say, from A to B, uh, then the B has to be highlighted, but the A 
needs to be not highlighted. I don't know what's the negative word for the highlighting, but yeah. So when you want to remove the highlighting from the previous item, uh, then that happens here. And what I do there is very simple. And I will also just show you the first uh, example. So I know what was the previous item. So then I go to that uh, previous items uh, uh, coordinate. So for example, if the previous item was the item number zero, then I go to these coordinates. I know them because I programmed these coordinates. Uh, and then I just simply fill up the background with black color. And then I put the cursor there uh, where, where it should be. And then text is red uh, because it's a temperature related value. And then I change the uh, or update the display with the number. And then if it's uh, the previous item was the number one, uh, I know that this is a time related value. I still do the same. I move to the corresponding coordinates, put the cursor there where it should be, but then it's a time related value. So I will print it with a white text. Uh, and then preheat time is printed there. And then the same for, for the soaking related values, for the reflow related values, for the, actually this is the holding related values, but I, I just use the cooling uh, as, as the word, keyword for it. And then uh, finally we have the start stop button. And after one of these uh, actions are performed, we set this menu change to false and that's all. And we are almost finished. We are now entering the heating. So if the heating is enabled, and if there is time to update uh, whatever we do with the heating, so the triac interval is passed, then uh, first of all, we draw a pixel according to the current temperature and we put it on the display. So that's uh, first we have to uh, calculate these uh, pixels. And then uh, we also update the elapsed time during the code or during the uh, heating phase. And uh, here I just put this a few lines which just send everything to the computer so I can plot it, for example, or, or whatever. I can keep track of these values on my computer. And uh, then I draw the pixels with a cyan color over the uh, already drawn uh, program curve. And what I do here is that I uh, put a pixel at the place where it should be, but then I put another pixel right under it or right next to it uh, on the y-axis because that just makes the line thicker, so it's easier to read. And then now we can finally use this program counter uh, variable. And the program counter is determining whether we are standing in the preheat phase, in the soaking phase, reflow phase and so on and so on. So what is happening here is that first, of course, it is zero because we are preheating. And now we have to calculate the target temperature. And then what this does is yeah, relatively simple. And I put examples everywhere and I recalculated this uh, multiple times to make sure that it's not uh, really stupid. But uh, this function is just calculating what should be the temperature at a certain time. So what should be the temperature at the 26th second of the program? Or what should be the temperature at the 32nd second in the program? And, and so on and so on. So here we have the uh, initial temperature on the coordinate system. And then this is the elapsed heating time. That's why it is good to use uh, variables which actually tell what they are. And then uh, we multiply this by one over preheat time. And then we also multiply this by the preheat temperature minus 20. And this 20 is because uh, the chart starts at 20. It's uh, also written here. And then uh, here you can actually see how the things uh, happening. And I put an example at the zeroth uh, 
moment and then 10 and two seconds later what should be the program temperature and then what happens is that we fill up the uh, corresponding part of the display with the target temperature value at the given time uh, or at the given moment uh, we can optionally send this value to the computer and then we see if the current temperature which we read is below the target temperature that means that we have to turn on the triac and then we also uh, turn the background of the uh, text which tells us which phase we are in into green and that indicates that if the background is green uh, then the heating is on and if uh, this is false so we are below the target temperature or sorry above the target temperature uh, then of course we don't need the heating now at this very moment so the triac is off and then uh, we set the background uh, red so that means that uh, the heating is not running it's off and uh, that's all and after these we check if the current temperature is larger than the preheat temperature and the elapsed heating time is larger than the preheat time so that means that we already above the temperature that we should reach in the preheat phase and we reached it after the required time in this case 90 seconds and then uh, that will increase the program counter uh, by one actually i could uh, use program counter plus plus here instead of uh, manually writing it as one but yeah it will be like this and and that's all so now let's say that this was true so the program counter is one so we enter the soaking phase and the soaking phase does the same uh, thing so there is this uh, function which uh, calculates the target temperature so what happens here is that we take the preheat temperature that we programmed in and then uh, we have to uh, subtract the preheat time from the total elapsed time and then we multiply with 1 over soaking time uh, minus preheat time and then we multiply this with soaking temperature minus preheat temperature and uh, you can see the examples here again how it should go and it's basically the same again we write the values the program temperature values on the display and then we decide whether we should turn the uh, track on and off and then if we fulfill these criteria time is elapsed and uh, the pcb is warm enough then we can go to the next program and then we go to the next program and then you can see again what is the formula for calculating the uh, program temperature at a given time uh, in the in the process a few examples can be seen here and again we update the temperature we decide what to do with the triac triac on or off and uh, then after we reach the temperature and time we move to the next part which is basically holding at the peak and uh, again we have the time at a given temperature since it's a flat curve it will be always uh, 165 based on this example again we update everything we decide whether we should keep the things on or off and then uh, we decide whether we should move to the next part or not and then uh, what we have here is now we are in the cooling phase which is the forced cooling with the fans so what will happen here is that uh, I just filled in some parts of the display and write cooling there and then uh, I turn off the heating turn off the triac as well I enable the, the cooling fan uh, which is done by two steps because I have to do it through the program but I also have to manually turn on one of the GPIO pins so that will uh, physically 
yeah, turn on the transistor, which will turn on the fans. And then I start the timer for the uh, fan. And uh, after each of these cases, of course, I have to uh, keep track of the elapsed uh, heating timer. So that is what happening here. So what I do is I always increase the value of this uh, elapsed heating time with this part here, uh, which is basically just a triac interval divided by 1000 because it is in milliseconds, but I need it in seconds. And, uh, and that's all. And after we moved into the cooling phase, which is the basically the else part of this uh, big mess up here, uh, then what happens is that if we are in the timer interval, if this is true, then what happens is uh, we have to disable the fan. So here I disable the fan, both, let's say, uh, like for real and both in this variable. And then I just uh, redraw the curve and uh, do the rest of the things to get back uh, the default uh, things on the display. But if this is not uh, the case, but the cooling fan is still enabled, uh, so it was not disabled like here, then we keep uh, counting the interval time, then uh, we keep calculating the values for plotting the chart, then we keep printing the values on the display, like the elapsed uh, time, and we still keep drawing the chart. So this is the very last phase of the reflow curve, where I just uh, draw the curve for one more minute on the display, and that should be a decreasing uh, temperature curve, uh, because the fan is uh, blowing room temperature air on the PCB. And since I need the time, the triac timer is still running and it is updated. And then uh, this is the final function. And uh, this is just uh, a manually coded function which draws the curve. So what I have to do is I have to draw the axis for the chart. And that uh, happened already in the, in the function introduced in the beginning of this uh, part. And then uh, I also want to put ticks on the, uh, on the chart to mark a certain period of temperature or certain period of time. And for the temperature, I put a tick at every 50 degrees Celsius. And for time, I put a tick at every 30 seconds. So then you will know roughly where is the uh, chart when you draw the real-time chart during heating. But uh, anyway, these values are shown on the, on the display as well. So you will see the time and the temperature as well. And then uh, this very last part uh, is drawing the temperature uh, time curve based on the values that we programmed. So this will be the preheating, uh, one part of it, and then we have uh, another part uh, for the soaking, for the reflow, for the cooling, and so on and so on. And uh, you can see that they are with different colors, so I just try to make them a bit more, uh, I don't know, informative to, to give some kind of uh, indication that if I have a, let's say, colder color, like yellow or orange, that is like the beginning phase of the uh, of the heating, and then uh, when the real soldering kicks in, uh, that should be indicated with red. And of course, when I'm cooling the uh, PCB, it should be indicated with, let's say, blue. So then it will be uh, indicated nicely that, oh, this is a cooling phase, it is, it is a blue color. And then uh, we arrived to the code, so 1218 lines. So once again, if you don't want to struggle with uh, copying the code from the display and typing it manually, please consider becoming my supporter on Patreon, because then you can just download this uh, project file 
from Patreon. And uh, then also it's a win-win situation for you and for me as well. And uh, you can also visit my website. Uh, link is in the description. I put uh, some extra resources there as well as usual. So you can uh, buy the uh, components very easily and uh, you can find everything. For example, you can find the PCB uh, from PCBWay. So if you go to my website and uh, select uh, my uh, PCB, you will be redirected to PCBWay.com and you will be able to buy the uh, exact same PCB. They will manufacture it for you and then you can uh, use it and you can support me at the same time. So I hope that this video is useful to you. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.